Welcome to my pop-up mini-series in which I'll be drawing and painting two very different architectural icons. Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. In the previous episode, I made a pencil drawing of the Sydney Opera House. Today, armed with my newly acquired familiarity with the subject, I'm going to be painting it up into a watercolour. This was my chosen view of the Sydney Opera House and this was my earlier pencil sketch. Well, I've got my £200 Saunders Waterford rough watercolour paper attached to the board so I'm ready and raring to go. So the first job before anything else, well after a cup of tea, is to draw my scene out onto the watercolour paper. Well, having already made a preliminary pencil sketch of the subject, I'm reasonably familiar with it, making this part of the job a little easier. The most important thing at this early stage is to keep it as simple as possible. All I'm looking for is the basic outline of the building and unlike the pencil sketch I won't be shading anything in. Once I'm happy with my drawing it's time to start throwing some paint at it. First up then is Prussian blue which I'm going to use for the sky. It was a nice sunny day in Sydney so I want to reflect that. I'm applying the paint wet on dry, taking care to create as clean an edge around the shape of the roof as possible. I do need to work quite quickly though. When you're painting onto dry paper, it's important to encourage previous brush strokes to bleed into new brush strokes as seamlessly as possible. If I take too long over it, I'll get hard lines which will look unsightly. Or worse, a wash that dries unevenly is likely to result in back runs or other anomalies. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add some of the Prussian blue to the water in the foreground. This is a busy harbour with boats passing to and fro constantly, so the water is rarely calm. Well, this is where rough textured paper really comes into its own. Broken brush marks help to churn things up a bit. Well, I'm lightening it in places by softening it off with a damp brush and then adding some French ultramarine for variation. Just for good measure, I'm also going to throw in a little bit of burnt umber right into the foreground. Having a dark foreground leading into the light is a compositional trick that helps to draw the eye into the scene. Works every time. For the main body of the building, I've chosen to use a light, quite weak burnt umber. Again, I'm painting onto dry paper and at this stage I'm looking to achieve as smooth and consistent a finish as possible. Other than that, this is a relatively straightforward procedure, nothing too taxing at all. It's time to turn my attention to the roof. Well, for the most part, I'm going to leave it as white untouched paper. 
That way I can maintain its impact. I will be adding some subtle hints of colour later, but for now I'm more concerned about trying to reinforce its three dimensional properties. For this task, I've mixed up some French ultramarine with a hint of burnt umber to create a blue grey colour. I also like to add a tiny amount of my secret weapon, alizarin crimson, just to warm it up a little bit. So I'm applying it to the bottom section of the roof and then softening it off with a damp brush and drawing it upwards. Notice I said damp, not wet. If the brush is too wet, then the moisture would simply bleed back into the pigment and probably create a back run or just wash the colour away altogether. While I've got the blue-grey colour already mixed up, I'm using it to add some details to the main building. At this stage, I'm mostly just breaking it down and trying to create a few accents here and there within the structure. Lights against darks, that kind of thing. You'll also notice that I'm softening it off in places, as I did with the roof. Contrasting light tones against dark tones are the means by which we explain the three-dimensional properties of objects. Creating graduations by softening things off helps to add the suggestion of curves and also helps to keep things visually interesting. Finally, it's time to turn my attention to the darkest tones. My go-to mix for all things dark is French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber, with a touch of alizarin Crimson if I want to add that subtle hint of warmth. Again, this is a reasonably straightforward process, applying the paint to dry paper and taking care to keep those edges as clean and precise as possible.
Despite wanting to keep the roof as bright as possible, I do want to offer some hints to the fact that the roof isn't actually white. My compromise is to add a few patches of colour here and there. In this case, I've used raw sienna and then softened them off to blend them into the surrounding wash. I've added some burnt umber to the raw sienna and I'm using it to apply some of the wall details on the main structure of the building. Well, how much detail to include in a painting like this is an entirely personal choice. I'm no architect, so I don't necessarily understand the precise details of how the opera house has been constructed. As an artist, however, I paint what I see and hope that the integrity of that structure holds up to a reasonable amount of scrutiny. Well, I'm sure Sydney Opera House aficionados would look at my painting and be concerned that I might have missed some crucial aspect of the building. The bottom line is, though, this is my interpretation, and as long as I've enjoyed myself putting it together, who cares? So I guess one of the messages I'm hoping to convey here is that you don't need to have any architectural knowledge or deep understanding of how a building has been constructed to be able to draw or paint it. My advice would always be to draw what you see and not what you think you know is there. Paint and be damned. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. In the next episode, I'm going to be looking at a completely different architectural icon that brings with it a whole bunch of new challenges. Sydney Opera House was built over 14 years and opened in 1973. Construction on my next subject began in 72 AD and was completed in 80 AD. Join me next time as I produce a pencil drawing of the Colosseum in Rome. It's round and it's got a lot of arches. <laughs> <laughs>